Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fabi, and welcome to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to do Dollar Tree DIYs, high-end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. Today, I have for you one piece inspired by Mackenzie Childs. It's perfect for year-round use. If you like unique home decor on a budget, please hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell. This is part of the Mackenzie Childs Valentine's collab, and it's hosted by Designers Loft, co-hosted by Antoinette Decorating, and guest hosted by Glamour Ellen. I'll leave all their links in the description box below, as well as the playlist link. There's a giveaway, so you're going to want to watch all the videos on this playlist link. That's my inspiration piece by Mackenzie Childs, and I'm going to try to recreate it with something that was on its way to the garbage. I got this kettle. It's very, very old. Um, I got it as a wedding gift a long time ago. And yeah, it it should have gone in the garbage, but my it was a gift. I didn't want to throw it out. So we're just going to give it new life. I'm going to take off all the hardware and then I'm going to use this color, Sequin Black by Folk Art. It's my favorite black. It has a little bit of shimmer in it, so it's perfect. You're also going to need a couple of flat edged brushes. This is the largest brush I have, and I'm just going to go ahead and just paint. I'm not making any lines. I'm just going to freehand it. And if I can do it, you can so do this. What we're going to do is we're just going to take your paintbrush with a good amount of paint on there, not dripping, of course, but we're just going to make little dashes. And we want these to be about an inch in height and width. And don't worry about perfection because right now we're just trying to get our placement. Make sure that your teapot is clean. I cleaned mine with soap and water. You might wanna go over it one more time with rubbing alcohol just to be sure that there's no residue of any kind on this, on your piece. So as you can see, I just go ahead and I continue making this checkerboard pattern, making sure that there's a little bit of space in between all of these. I'm also making sure they line up vertically and horizontally. And I go ahead and I do this all around the bottom of this kettle. So I'm using this for decorative use, not for actually, you know, making tea or boiling water. So I just had to throw that out there. This is just for decor. I'm going to have it in my kitchen, so I am going to seal it, but I'm just going to have this as a decorative piece year round. So I speed it up a little bit because I appreciate your time and I'm trying to show you how you can recreate this look without you feeling the whole process. <laughs> it did take some time, but I enjoy making fun home decor. So once we have the bottom bits painted, about four rows in height painted, I go ahead and I give it a second coat. Now we're gonna take another paintbrush. So we have a large paintbrush, a small paintbrush, and a medium paintbrush. And we're going to be using the medium for the next part. As you can see, the large one there, it was the same exact size as the one we just used. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the medium sized paintbrush. You can pick up all these paintbrushes at Walmart. They're widely available. I love the ones by Plaid because I am a Plaid ambassador, so I I really like their paintbrushes. So I just take that medium sized paintbrush and I dip it into the paint just like I did before and I'm just going to do the same thing with the smaller paintbrush. Now the reason why I use the smaller paintbrush is because of this shape. See how the top of the kettle is kind of sloping inward as it gets closer to the top it kind of goes in on a like concave so what I'm trying to say is that it helps the checkerboard pattern fit the teapot better so we're gonna go ahead and do this all the way around the teapot kettle whatever you want to call this thing and we are going to do two more rows right on top of the ones the first set we did. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and complete those squares. 
So once we have the two rows made, I do go over it one more time, but I noticed that it's not going to work for the very top, top part of this kettle. So I decided to use the smallest paintbrush for this area. We're going to dip it in like we did before, and we're just going to make little tiny rectangles, I guess is what I ended up making. Later on, I remedied it, but in hindsight, I think I would have just preferred to keep the rectangles in this place. Now, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's Mackenzie Childs, handcrafted, inspired, so it doesn't need to be perfect. We want it to be fun, we want it to be whimsical, and it's very relaxing to just paint and have fun. So we're not gonna worry too much about all the corners right now. We are gonna go back and touch it up later, and each of these squares is gonna get two to three coats. But honestly, it's personal, personal preference, whatever you want, it's your project. Now I wanted to have a decorative lid as well, and I wanted it to pat match the same pattern. So I go ahead and I just put the cap on, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint on little dashes. And I'm trying to put the black ones so that they fall right on top of those white rectangles so they line up. I wanted to do something funky in the middle as well, but I ended up changing my mind, so don't worry about what's going on there. We're gonna do something different later. So now I'm gonna try to paint the spout as well. So to do that, I kind of tilted the teapot on an angle so that I could see it as if, basically I wanted the checkerboard pattern to continue as if it was undisturbed for the side of the teapot. So I just looked at the teapot sideways and I just kind of eyeballed it. You could totally use a pencil or anything, a marker, just to draw out your lines if you wanna be a little bit more exact, but I'm just showing you what I did. You see, I kinda of just painted on those two rows and then I painted on the bottom one after to make sure that it connects both sides the right way. Now this is what it looked like after the first coat of paint. Honestly, I liked it just like this, but I do go in and add some more color. Now we're gonna paint using this Treasure Gold by Folk Art in the color Mayan Gold. It is beautiful. This is the most beautiful color and it's very thick. It's not liquidy like paint is very thick and a little bit goes a long way so it's definitely something you might want to consider investing in and I am just going to paint all of the parts that are metal on this kettle I also paint those little hardware sections where the handle was connected just to help it look a little more interesting now I took one of these pumpkin vase fillers from the fall from Dollar Tree I don't I never used it but I'm glad I got it because I'm gonna use it right now and I like how it turned out so whenever you see those little vase fillers at Dollar Tree grab grab one pack at least because you never know they might be handy so I only found one pack at Dollar Tree and I am gonna go ahead and paint this whole thing in that Mayan gold color so it did take about two coats but once that's fully painted, I took this bead. Now this bead is from BB Craft. It's just a regular one inch bead with the hole in the center. It was already previously painted red from another project. It was just left over. So I'm just gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna hot glue a pattern. <laughs> I wanted it to look like a decorative bead. So I'm just using some hot glue and I'm making like squiggly lines. I'm also making like kind of like a snake S formation. I also made some uh, shapes that look like leaves, kind of like a pointy oval. And this is what it looked like. Now I, I had to do half of the bead at a time. So I did one side, I let that dry completely. Once it was dried completely and I pulled off all of those little stringy bits, I went ahead and I hot glued the other side the same way. Once all the hot glue is dry and your pattern is nice and set, 
you're gonna go ahead and give it a coat in this red color. I used Folk Art's Lipstick Red. It's my favorite red color by Folk Art. Okay, so once that's fully painted, I set it aside to dry. Once that's fully painted, we're gonna go ahead and add some of this glossy white and brilliant white. I wasn't, honestly, you probably don't even have to add this white feature, but as you saw, my kettle was damaged at the bottom. So I did have to add some paint to mine. And I figured the glossy finish of this paint would give it more of an enameled look. So I kind of like that feature of it, but you totally do not have to do this part if your kettle is intact. So now I'm gonna go ahead with the medium size as I did last time, and I'm just gonna fill in the medium, the bigger squares at the bottom. And this medium sized brush is gonna help me keep the shape of the squares. Now, if you wanna make the pointy edges of each of the squares, we're gonna do that later. Now, right now I do just fill in those white parts. And this is what it's looking like so far. I am very happy with it. Later on in the video, you'll see I had a disaster happen, but for now, I'm loving the way it looks. Upon observation, I noticed there were rectangles and they probably should be squares. So I just decided to add one more strip of black paint right under that gold rim, just to help it look more like squares on the one side. I probably could have kept it the way it was because it was beautiful. I really liked it, but I decided to do this and I think it still looks great. So don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying this video and if you want to see more of what I make. So now I'm just going to go ahead with the smallest paintbrush and I'm going to be very, very careful. This is the part where we're going to fix the corners and be finicky. Now this part, if you get stressed out, you could totally just get up and walk away from your project, come back a little later. So to fix the corners, what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate your brush. Your brush is gonna do all the work for you. So you're basically just going to take your brush, set it down at the corner where you wanna make that sharp edge, set it down and you're gonna stroke your paintbrush towards the center of that square and just do that for every corner rotating your paintbrush, rotating the kettle and just get it to where you want it to be. But remember, we don't want it to be perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead with the checkerboard pattern on this lid. As you see, I'm using the smallest paintbrush again. I have one small paintbrush for the white and another small paintbrush for my black. That way I can get this done faster. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make little dashes as you can see in between those black strips we made earlier. And once that entire thing is made and I go over it twice just to make sure that it's as stark white as possible and that it's the shape of a square, we're gonna go ahead and use the black paintbrush. And then for this one, we're just gonna draw squares on top of the white squares. Now, this could get tricky if you don't wait for your white paint to mix, uh, to dry. You wanna wait for your white paint to dry before you do this because we all know that if white and black get together, it makes gray. So if you're like me and don't mind paint mixing, <laughs> go ahead and do it. But if you are, you know, trying to get this in perfection, um, you'd probably be measuring and you would probably be letting your paint dry. Now for this middle portion, I just wanted to add a decorative feature to make it look more like Mackenzie Child's checkerboard. And my paint is not dry. Now this is what I wanted for mine. It gave it that streaky Mackenzie Child effect every time I brought it close to that black paint and I loved how streaky it was getting. It's part of that courtly check vibe that Mackenzie Child is very known for. And I just made sure that those inner lines lined up somewhat with the outside.
squares. So as you can see, I'm just touching up and we're letting the paintbrush do the work. And it's not gonna be perfect and that's totally okay. It really is fun doing this. I am not even joking. Now, if you try to recreate this, uh, you could always play this video again and just pause it after every step. That way you can craft alongside me. And if this is your first time watching my video, I like to premiere my videos. So if you wanna come over and say hi, every time my video airs for the first time on YouTube, I'm there to talk to you guys. So you could even stop by and say hi at my premiere. You just have to hit that notification bell so you know when I'm premiering. I love talking to you guys. So let me know in the comments down below, would you try this DIY? You so can do it. If I can do this, guys, you can do it. I promise you can do this. Okay, so now we have this little pumpkin. It's painted in gold and it's dried. And now we have this eucalyptus I got from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little sprig of eucalyptus. I'm gonna take my detailed scissors and I'm just gonna cut off all of these little leaves. Now the detailed scissors are also from Dollar Tree. Most of my supplies are from Dollar Tree. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove any of that glitter excess that was on those leaves. And now we're gonna hot glue the largest beads first. Wow, leaves, sorry. We're gonna hot glue the largest leaves to the bottom of this pumpkin. And we wanna make sure that when we hot glue them, that the leaves are curving downward. So if you're gluing this to the upside down side of this pumpkin, you would be hot gluing them under the pumpkin in a cross formation. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. But you wanna make sure that the curve is pointing up when you're looking at the pumpkin upside down. You'll see in a second, I'll show you what I mean. But we're gonna start with the big leaves of the eucalyptus first. We're gonna hot glue those first. Then we're gonna hot glue the smaller leaves in between the larger leaves. I hope I haven't lost you. I am so sorry. This is what I'm saying. It should look like this. And that's what it looks like once the smaller leaves are hot glued in between. And this is gonna serve as the little topper to our kettle. But first we have to paint it all in the same Mayan gold color by Treasure, Treasure Gold Folk Art. Folk Art Treasure Gold. Okay, so once the whole thing is painted in this gold color, I just set it aside to dry for a little bit. And while that was drying, I'm gonna take this little vase filler. Now this vase filler is also from the Dollar Tree. It's from the Christmas season. And I'm gonna also paint that in this treasure gold color. And this is pretty easy to paint. So once that's fully coated in this, we're gonna let it dry. Once that's drying, we're gonna move on to the streaks those colors that flow in the courtly check pattern. I'm gonna take some of this glossy white paint. You don't need a lot of it, so do not pour it out like I just did. We just want a small amount. So you'll see me in a second. <laughs> I put it back in the bottle because we are not wasting paint around here. No way. Okay, so once the white was at a proper amount. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this blue color, Midnight. It's like a deep blue. It's the most beautiful, my favorite blue. We're gonna put a little bit on the side of the white. We don't want them to be too close, but not too far, because we do wanna blend them. But we wanna, we wanna control our blending. We're also gonna use this Ceramco color in the color Crocus Yellow. It's like a light buttery yellow. 
and we're going to go ahead and put that on the other side of the white paint. Now, you can use whichever colors you want or whatever colors you have on hand because it's your DIY at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So now we're going to take this small flat brush. Now, as you can see, I'm going to dip it into the white paint first. Then I'm going to take a very tiny amount on the corner. I'll show you like this. We're going to take a little tiny amount of blue. Then we're going to go to whichever spot. You could put it on the black or you could put it on the white. You can put it wherever you want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to one of the edges and we're just going to kind of streak it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You do it however you want. But this is how these little accent features are what separates the Mackenzie Childs from any other checkerboard pattern. So these kind of drag marks right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this randomly. Some of them are gonna go horizontally, other ones are gonna go vertically. It's up to you. I'm only gonna be doing this blue and this yellow, which are kind of a staple to this courtly check pattern. But remember, you can use pink, you can use orange, you can use whatever you want. So we're just gonna go ahead and start on the edge and kind of streak it across and kind of kind of like fan out the paintbrush as we press it down and that's basically it. it's not difficult it's not complicated then I'm just gonna take the same paintbrush I'm just gonna wipe off any of that um, paint and I'm gonna do the same exact process for the yellow now I think I went a little too heavy on the yellow but um, if you if this happens to you you could totally wipe it off gently or you could add some more white on top so that's what I go ahead and I do here I just add yellows randomly around around and you only want it to fill up half of that square But yeah, so I'm gonna be using this all year round. You'll see at the end, at the final reveal, I'll show you how I um, stage it for Valentine's Day, just with some roses and some fun ribbon. But that's how it looks close up. And um, I'm liking how it's coming out. Now it's time to add the topper. Once everything's nice and dry, I also, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, I also added some gray streaking inside, around the outside of the kettle as well. So a little bit of black, I just tapped a little bit of black paint. Same thing I did with the other colors and I, and I also added that to the check. Now I'm taking some E6000 and I'm applying it with a little bit of hot glue. We don't want these adhesives to mix, but I'm using these two adhesives just to attach this top decorative piece. And I push it down all the way, kind of smush it down so that everything doesn't move. And I want those eucalyptus leaves to be flat on the lid. So be sure to push those down as well. But we're not done yet because we have to make this look regal, right? So that it's believable. So now we're gonna add this bead on top and I, had one of those moments where I was in shock and in awe that the top stem of that pumpkin fit perfectly into this wooden bead. Oh my goodness, I love when that happens. Look, it just slips right on like it was made for, they were made for each other. Anyways, I had a moment there, excuse me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead now and just hot glue the top little bead to the top of that and it took a lot more hot glue than you just saw. So I totally filled out, filled up the inside of the bead with hot glue and then stuck it on top. Now we're gonna take some more hot glue and this detail tip glue gun um, using a, wow, sorry. Using a detail tip glue gun, I'm just gonna, we're gonna put a bead of hot glue 
on the outside middle portion of those leaves. I will show you a close up in a second. I am so sorry. I don't know where my words are going. So basically, I just want to make another decorative feature. So I'm just going to make it with hot glue. So I start off by putting a dot, a bead of hot glue on the outer rim all around. You'll see. See those little beads? Okay, that's how we start. Now, after those are dry completely, we're going to add two more hot glue beads beside those beads, that first one. And the two hot glue beads that we're adding now are going to be smaller than the first bead of hot glue we applied. And I do that for all of those little beads. Once that's all nice and dry, we're gonna go ahead and paint everything in that same Mayan gold color. And oh my goodness, it looks like one of those ornate pieces. No one will ever know that it was hot glue. So I was so happy with how this turned out. You'll see in a little bit that my toddler had completely different plans for this project. But if you enjoyed this video and if you would try this, or if you got an idea, or whatever just consider subscribing and leave me a comment down below and once you leave a comment down below and leave a comment on all the other videos in this playlist you're entered in to a great giveaway now for that giveaway you're going to want to check out designer lofts video i think she puts the details in her video so once you're done painting you're going to seal it with this dishwasher safe mod podge and it takes 28 hours to cure. So as you can see here, before I got to add the Mod Podge, my son completely destroyed my project. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to redo it, but this is how it turned out. Make sure you seal your project before your toddler gets to it. And I hope you enjoy this. This is how it turned out for Valentine's Day. I added some mesh tubing from Dollar Tree. This is all Dollar Tree supplies that I used on the inside of this, minus the greenery. And oh, that ribbon is from Michaels, in case you wanna try it yourself. The original creator of Mackenzie Childs, her name is Victoria Mackenzie Childs. She has a YouTube channel as well as a Patreon. Please support her channel. I'll leave her link in the description box below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps my channel. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time I post a new video share with your friends, sharing is caring. A special thank you to all these ladies for collaborating with me. Don't forget to check out all their videos on this playlist to be eligible for that giveaway. As always friends, thank you so much for watching. Take care, God bless, catch you on the next one, bye. If you like this video, here are some other ones you might enjoy.